Joining me now is Leland Miller. He is the CEO of China Beige Book. Leland, wonderful to have you today. I want to start with a research note that you wrote yesterday saying any semblance of positive news should be on the way, hence the rally in sensitive Chinese stocks. Last I checked, uh, markets had bounced in, in China. Is this a semblance of positive news? Is this just the appearance of positive news, this uh, elderly vax campaign, or is this actually positive news? Well, look, you can have positive news without it meaning the end of COVID zero. I think the flawed part of many people's assumptions right now is they say, oh, we are peeling back a quarantine period by a couple of hours. You know, we're moving, uh, you know, this measure uh, by a day. We're moving this other measure by some small amount. This must mean COVID zero is approaching an end. And it's very difficult to imagine uh, a China that opens up, that ends COVID zero, which is essentially the lockdowns of, of communities and, and of businesses during the the winter spread season. So, you know, is it positive news? Sure. Is it going to lead to some mini rallies in certain stocks? Absolutely. Is this an endure, you know, the beginning of the end for COVID zero? I, I don't think it is. So would you say we are no closer to a reopening in China than we were even before these protests? What I think the protests did is I think they moved the timeline for acceptable action in terms of ending COVID zero up a few months. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. think that the party was in any particular hurry to end COVID zero. Uh, they're worried about the virus. They're worried about deaths. They're worried about the legacy of the party from mishandling COVID zero. So maybe you had a timeline of, of you know March to June next year where they would do some things. That timeline is likely moved up. Maybe it's to start things in, in, in February, March. The point is they, they can't wait probably as long as they, they thought they could. But this does not mean that they're going to rip back COVID zero in December. They're not going to rip back COVID COVID zero in January. They've got to keep things under relative control in order to make sure the virus don't lead to spiraling death counts. So what measures do you think, if not a, a total lifting of, of zero COVID, what measures do you think we might start to see scale back? You talked about how uh, days have been shaved off of the quarantine. I mean, we know that where people quarantine has changed. What else do you think we might, where we might start to see concessions in the policy? Well, if I were she, the first thing I deal with is family separation. I would try to put an end to that. Uh, you know, the the number one thing markets are looking for is a, is is a, is a date certain in the future where they can see a horizon where COVID zero no longer exists. That's the signal that that businesses are waiting for. If you look in China Beige Book data, they've been telling us for months and months and months that they won't borrow, they won't invest, and they won't hire until COVID zero is over. Not an announcement COVID zero is over, but until COVID zero is over. So to the extent you could ever provide even a rough date for when there's an exit ramp, that would be very helpful. But for obvious reasons, including being backed into a corner uh, in the spring and in, in the late winter, uh, the, the authorities have so far been very hesitant to, to move in that direction. Mm. What do you think? I know you said in an interview yesterday that these protests are not enough to see she actually step down. What would it take to see uh, that type of massive movement? You know, n n nothing comes to mind. I, you know, I think that when people see protests, even ones as significant as the recent ones, which which were uh, protests over the same issue, you know, bubbling up in multiple cities, th that is very unusual in China. But that doesn't mean that the regime is at risk. Uh, so I, I think that we're very far away from any type of, uh, of scenario where the party's in danger or Xi Jinping's in danger. What I do think this does is put enormous political pressure on the party, on Xi Jinping specifically, to, to, to figure out a COVID zero plan. They haven't mm. had a plan for years. I see. So to figure out a, a sustainable COVID plan. Do you also think we start to see Beijing separate themselves from some of the local municipalities that have actually uh, been tasked with performing and executing zero COVID? That would be a very problematic task because, you know, obviously, the, you know, the, the old platitude was that the center announces what the policies are and then the, the lo localities do what they want. And, and to some degree, that's been, been uh, the case. But the problem has been that Xi Jinping has been so uh, personally associated with the COVID zero policy, that nobody in the provinces and the towns, nobody wants to have any any daylight between them and and a very aggressive form of COVID zero policy. So I think what they're doing in terms of just slowly changing the narrative and the official central publications that COVID zero can be lived with, that it's not as scary as you think. I think that's moving in the direction where she is saying, look, it's okay to have a little bit of daylight uh, between you know this this draconian. Uh, COVID zero and what we want to implement on the ground, but it's going to take time. Mm.
Mm. One thing I thought was really interesting got my attention. You say a sharp change in course under pressure would be a signal of weakness to everyone, protesters, the masses, party elites, and the world. I think that's exactly right. You know, every every other every couple of nights, I get some sort of text saying that something on Chinese social media suggests that COVID zero is going to end. You know, 10 minutes from now, it's very unlikely that she does this kind of course correction. Forget politics, uh, domestic politics. For forget uh, forget health. If you're just talking about Xi Jinping, for him to have doubled down at the Congress and then to immediately reverse himself after a few protests, that would be a signal of of, of weakness. So you have to factor that in your analysis too. Uh, just just a lot more things going on than 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 Xi slowly bending to uh, a desire to open up. It's been very interesting to watch. Global investors, however, seem to seem to like it. They'll take the good news where they can get it. Leland Miller, good to have you. It's the CEO of China Beige Book.